Kevin O'Connell did a little chatting with the media today. All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lepagus show. I'm One Bar with Lepagus, and uh, Kyle met with the media today, so we're just going to yank out a few of those golden nuggets oh, we talked about. That sounds hurt. I don't like having things yanked out of me. That depends on what it is. That is true. Before we get in that, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Like the vids, we are closing in on 7K, so drop hashtag 7,000 subscribers. Don't drop the whole sentence, but hashtag 7,000 in the comments. I wasn't clear what I was talking about. I said close to 7K. I didn't say subscribers, so that's what I was getting at. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. So Kevin O'Connell, he meant a couple of noteworthy items to talk about, and uh, every time this guy talks, I get more excited. When the cock talks, we listen, and we listen closely. And there, you know, a little forthcoming with a few things here, so there's definitely some juicy tib tidbits, juicy niblets, whatever you want to call them, to talk about. The first thing is he talked about Darius Smith and Dale Hunter being uh, movable pieces on this defense. Uh, he said, I'm not really going to quote this verbatim, but he's excited to have them both here. How are they going to move them around to create favorable matchups? That's why we've got Mike Pettin, Mike Smith, and Chris Rumpf. Then he goes on again, and he talks about moving these guys around, movable pieces. And I really, really like what I'm hearing there about how they're going to use these guys. Yeah, I mean, I'm I, I'm glad he's kind of stating the obvious. I'm glad he's not just going to put them in one spot. I mean, these guys deserve to be moved around. They deserve to be giving opposing offenses headaches and not knowing exactly what they're going to do. Sounds like they're going to have their hand in the dirt. Sounds like they're going to be back there a couple times. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see how creative they get. And uh, Mike Rumpf and Mike Patton are going to do fantastic. I hope it's not just those two. I hope they move around a lot of these guys. It's something I don't think Zimmer did enough last year. He's kept guys in the same spots. we got to be rotating, creating mismatches, depending on the team we're playing. Uh, find the weakness, exploit it, and attack it. So I love the fact that he's going to use these guys movable, flexible pieces. Uh, another thing he kind of talked about was uh, just some kind of coaching philosophies or, or some plans that he has. Uh, he said there's some weeks he might turn to offensive coordinator Wes Phillips and just let him call the offense, run the offense, and he'll go be a defensive coach that week. Uh, he said that's a good thing when being head coach. You can be in different rooms and nobody can say anything to you. So how do you feel about that? How do you feel about Wes Phillips taking over the offense? Well, he's offensive coordinator. Why shouldn't he be? And, and something tells me those two weeks will be against the Chicago Bears. Other than that, uh, Kevin O'Connell. I mean, we know we know KOC is going to be a hundred percent involved in the offense. Uh, maybe he loosens the reins a little bit, but we want him involved in the offense as well. If he wants to go hang out with the defensive side of the the, the team against the Bears, uh, that's fine. Well, I, I, he says it now too. I mean, that's something that could definitely change depending on how the season's going. You know, maybe he gives Wes Phillips a shot, doesn't like the flow of the offense. He could definitely come back and step in there. So it is nice that he's going to have his hands involved in both sides of this team and not like just do what Zimmer did and focus on the defense. So I do like the part that he's actually going to be a head coach who really coaches the overall part of this team. He was also asked about when to go for it on fourth down. He said the analytics and the data will drive a lot of that, but the in game specifics of that day, weather, Who's the quarterback on their side? How have we played offensively? How is our defense playing? So uh, that's going to determine if he goes for it on fourth down. And I, I, that's a pretty damn good answer right there. Yeah, it is. I mean, I hope I hope that he's always taking those things into consideration. You look at these guys that uh, go completely on the analytics, like the Chargers coach Brandon Staley uh, did not make him look very good and did not pan out for him well. So I hope they don't go strictly on the analytics. Sounds like that's not what they're going to do. So I like that. Uh, but like you said, going back to the coaches, um, depending on how the season goes, you never know. I mean, he's saying all these things now. Things can change in a jiffy. Absolutely could. But, yes, I do like that as well. Just the fact that, you know, just because the analytics say to go for it, you got to factor in how the team's playing, how the other team's playing. So there's there's a lot more than go, that goes into it than just what the numbers show you. So Just uh, remember, we got Jordan Berry's big hog of a leg that can boot the hell out of that thing so we don't need to go for it every time yeah he was asked about the vikings offensive line he was a little bit optimistic here he did say um basically that there's other coaches here who have three or four open spots we just have one and he's talking about the open job at right guard so this is kind of a a little bit of an endorsement of garrett bradbury and also not so much of an endorsement that jesse davis is gonna be had the starting job well he said jesse davis has the front runner so that's saying a lot to me. I mean, the fact that Jesse Davis, a guy who hasn't even been here, is the front runner 
And uh, that says a, a lot about Wyatt Davis, too. I, I'm, maybe he wasn't high on him in the draft either. I mean, clearly he knows who Wyatt Davis is. So Wyatt Davis fans, seeing this, that Jesse Davis is a front runner who is better guard than he's been a tackle, uh, not great news. <laughs> Well, he did say it's an open competition, too. There's it's always going to be a front runner in an open competition, but it is open. So let's just remember that. We just said, you know, things could change as the season progresses, and this could change as well as training camp in the mini camps and the OTAs progress. So right now, there's always going to be a front runner. That's fine. Jesse Davis, he probably should be the front runner. He's a veteran. He so. said it was open. The fact that he took the initiative to say there's a front runner, I think says a lot. So he could say, yeah, it's open competition. Nope, front runner. Yeah, up. but maybe it's just also a way to welcome Jesse Davis to the team as well, too. So this is the NFL. This isn't recess. Well, you, he's always talking about you know having yeah, good relationships, good having good collaboration, working together. So maybe he's just welcoming this guy with open arms. Well, I'm it's, not it's, buying it's, this warm and fuzzy. It's possible. Bullshit. It's possible. Not possible. Zero percent possible. No, it's definitely possible. All right. So let's. Um, he's asked about the overall roster. Um, he said, oh, sometimes things may not jump out as changing the roster. We made some additions that I think will have a big time impact. And he also addressed something we've kind of talked about that the moves the Vikings have made uh, really make it look like they just think the coaching staff is enough to elevate this team from eight wins to the playoffs. He just replied to that. He said, I don't really look at it that way, to be honest with you. So um, do you think he's coming with a chip on his shoulder that he thinks he's actually the missing piece here? And uh, what's your take on that? I just think he's really confident and sees that there are some very good players on this team. He's probably very surprised how bad they were last year, and he's keeping the offense pretty much intact, and he's working on the defense, and the defense, which was dog shit. So I like it. I don't think he's wrong. I mean, clearly, if we go in and have another seven, eight win season, they're going to blow shit up. So he's he's going he's putting all of his chips in on this roster, but also I think he's going to have some wiggle room to blow it up. What about the fact that he said uh, we made some additions, additions plural, that will have a big time impact? You think that's just referring to those, you know, the three big signings? You think he's actually thinks some of these smaller moves could have an impact? I don't know. I mean, I can't. I, I think he's talking about the big boys. I mean, we need depth. I, I still think that Shannon Sullivan is going to end up being a nice sleeper signing and and have a big old impact on us. But I think he's talking about the big boys, all on defense. Yeah. The last thing he did mention was Irv Smith Jr. He said they're going to be smart with Irv. There's no reason why he can't hit the ground running from a mental perspective this spring, which I think says a lot mental perspective, which means he's probably not going to get a whole lot of uh, drill time, physical drill time Ooh, in the spring. I love drill time. You know what else it this do. means? This means we're going to see a shit ton of Johnny freaking Munt. Johnny Munt out there. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, and take the time, Irv. Don't even have him play in the preseason. Yeah. Just have him come out week one and have six catches, 54 yards, two touchdowns. I like the sound of that. Yeah. So take it cautious with this guy. Let him watch. Let him learn. Let him read the book on the sideline. Maybe Sean Manning can help help him with the offense. I don't know what it's going to take. Love the fact that they're going to basically treat him with uh, what's that? With gloves. With gloves. Little gloves. Little gloves. That was pretty much everything he kind of wrapped up, right? Those were the hot nuggets, the hot takes. Again, some information there to be had, to be gleaned out of this. But uh, overall, you know, nothing that's really overly shocking. Well, we should just continue to enjoy these types of uh, little snippets that he's out there talking because it's still the honeymoon period. He starts off 0-2, 0-3. It's going to be interesting to see how he reacts, if he's still as open, if he's still telling everybody when he gets a question, says, you know what, That's a real. I appreciate that question. <laughs> yeah, maybe he'll just turn to Mike Zimmer and be crotchy as hell and no, not say hi to anybody in the hallway. Never, never. He's okay. always going to be smiling. All right, so those are the juicy tidbits from Kevin O'Connell talking at the owner's meeting. Um Again, let us know what you think. Let us know if you liked what you hear, heard or if you do not like what you heard. And also remember this. A man, a man can lower his chances of prostate cancer by having four orgasms a week.